You're watching Twin Tier Sunday with Jennifer Sheehan. Welcome to Twin Tier Sunday. I'm your host, Jennifer Sheehan. This week, we're delving into the world of comics. And before we talk to local artists, we hear from two guys who started dreaming about being comic legends in their young teens. Both David Gallagher and Steve Ellis have worked for many different companies, including DC and Marvel. Take a look. I think the first time I realized I wanted to work in comics was when I realized that other people made them for a living. So I want to say I was 13, 14. A passion that seems to have fallen into each of these guys' hands unexpectedly and at a young age. Uh, it's funny because uh, I've, I've done comics probably since I was about 11 years old. Um, and I went to art school uh, with kind of that in the back of my head, but I never thought that was, I didn't know what I was going to do with art. I just kind of knew I'd like to draw and paint. And, um, and it was actually at school doing a, um, a newspaper strip. Uh, we had a daily newspaper. And I started off, a friend of mine said, you know, suggested that I start doing a, a strip for the newspaper. And by the time I was done, I was doing half the page. Like, they used to have like 16 strips. By the time I was done, they only had eight. And mine was taking up half the page. Um, and, uh, and, and it was every day. So I was doing like, you know, a six panel page every day. Um, and, uh, and I kind of started, it, 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 it kind of, I, I kind of left school with like a painting portfolio and a, and a caricature portfolio. And I kind of had the comic stuff on the side because I didn't know it was actually something I could make a regular living at. And then, um, so it really became like a, a driving goal when I, I got my stuff in at Marvel and they hired me to do a backup in Iron Man. And I was like, wait a minute, I, I got paid. And it worked like three months out of school. This is awesome. So then basically I put my hooks in and anything that I could get my hands on. So at times, you know, lie, cheat, steal, whatever I had to do to get a job to do more comics. So I worked for anyone. I did all kinds of jobs for all kinds of companies. I ended up working for uh, Marvel, DC, Valiant, all within like the first six months of working in the business because I didn't know how to do it, I just, I'll take anything and I'll, I'll, you know, talk to anybody and see what I can get. But at what point did a young boy's passion turn into a career and a lifestyle? Yeah, it was kind of a weird progression. It was uh, actually a friend of mine forced me to mail to Marvel because I had done all these mailers and sent them to DC and Dark Horse and a bunch of other companies and they all kind of sent me rejection letters. And he's like, send it to Marvel, send it to Marvel. I'm like, well, Marvel's the best. They're never gonna hire me. And then I sent it to Marvel and literally a week later, they hired me for this five page Iron Man story and it was kind of like, okay, I'll do it and see what happens. And, uh, you know, and then it kind of snowballed from there. It was something that I studied in college um, for my master's degree. Um, working in comics was always something that, that felt really good, and, but I didn't know how to go about it. At the time uh, I was in college, there was no college writing courses. Um, but after I sort of fumbled my way through coursework, I eventually interned at Marvel Comics when I was 24, and the rest is sort of history. The two have worked on numerous projects together and have even started their own studio, Bottled Lightning. So today, Steve Ellis and I are at Heroes uh, Comic Shop doing a signing for a book we just recently released, Green Lantern Core Convergence. Uh, it is a story of a, uh, a PE teacher trying to uh, make right with his past and trying to come to terms with um, some of the emotional scars that people have put him through uh, and ultimately overcome fear to be the best kind of person he can be. I am currently working on The Only Living Boy, uh, number four right now. Uh, and uh, that's exciting. The Only Living Boy is the story of a 12-year-old boy named Eric who runs away from home and wakes up in a, a patchwork alien world without his memory in a world filled with like mermaid warriors and insect princesses and giant dragons. I, I sort of liken it to uh, the Isle of Dr. Moreau meets the Jungle Book. And I'm really putting, you know, putting all my uh, my energy towards the projects that David and I are, uh, are, are putting together. We're creating some pitches for other companies and um, 
trying to, you know, basically making, you know, kind of juggling our own projects and other projects for companies. The world of comics is a diverse, beloved, and sought after craft. The, I think the current upswing in comics has a lot to do with um, the approachability of the movies, um, the cartoons, the TV shows, and I think generally the, the content has become far more sophisticated uh, and far more interesting and um, great for the casual reader and the hard time reader alike. But how do you as an artist stand out above the rest? Um, I think my the biggest um, I think the biggest two pieces of advice that I have for anybody uh, working in the industry or somebody who wants to break into the industry is uh, you want to be so good that people can't ignore you. You want to be so good that people always know who you are and that your reputation precedes you. Well, you know, it's funny. Similar to what David said is, is you know, and that's the easy answer is, is you know, be so good that people can't, uh, you know, can't ignore you. But I think part of it also is be versatile and be your own person. Uh, one of the things I see people doing often is they'll come into a, uh, you know, with a giant Marvel portfolio. And what tends to happen without even realizing it, when you walk in with a giant Marvel portfolio, you kind of look like one of the guys who's already doing the books. And so you could end up being the, the, the cheaper Jim Lee or the cheaper this or the cheaper that. It's very easy for that to happen to you. Uh, so what I would suggest is always try to have your own stories because the business now is not, when I first started, the business was only pretty much Marvel and DC and there were independents kind of, but really independent is you doing it yourself and that's literally what it means, independent. And now there are opportunities with the internet, with especially with the internet, just getting your work out and practicing having a webcomic and trying it out and doing it every day and seeing what that's like. Because like I said, when I did that newspaper strip, that was a revelation to me because it was an everyday commitment to drawing on the strip on top of everything else I had to do. Mm -hmm. Like I had all my schoolwork and I had all the other stuff that I had to do. And then every day I had a strip that I had to do. And, I, and so it was, um, you had to learn this kind of devotion to the point of almost, uh, Obsession, <laughs> you know, and, and that's the kind of that's the kind of that kind of obsession to a degree is what gets you past just being one of the other people that's kind of sitting at a show and gets you in getting jobs or selling projects or whatever. It's it's the obsession with your own kind of trying to be excellent. And for those of you sitting at home who have not picked up a comic, here's why you should. Because they're awesome and don't require batteries. You might just be surprised at what you can find underneath the cover. Well, I would say the reason to read comic books is probably the, yeah, we all watch TV, we all see movies, and one of the things is I find like the material that you're getting there starts to get very similar. <laughs> and I think one of the great things about comic books is that it's an inexpensive enough hobby and an inexpensive enough medium that people can come in it, come in with such a wide variety of types of stories and so rather than it being just yet another, you know, like half the shows on TV are either reality or they're mysteries, uh, if you look around this store and you look at all the variety of stories and the types of things that people are putting out, you know, yes, there are the superheroes, but there's so much other stuff, uh, so many different genres and ideas and uh, that it's exciting. It's exciting and you can find that one book that you love. Maybe you don't read any other comics, you just find the one that, that hits you in the right place. Coming up after the break, we speak to some local artists with a unique style crafted from their southern tier roots. Welcome back. It's finally time to start talking to the local indie artist, and this is Bill. Bill, tell me about you, what you are working on and how you, as an artist, incorporate that into your lifestyle here in the Southern Tier. Oh, well, um, I'm actually working, I'm a comic writer, and I'm actually one of a other half. Uh, Chris Bell is the artist who I work with, and we work as a team, and we're zero comics, and we, um, we make comics. And it's great because it gives us a chance to be very creative. And, and that's what comics are. It's a blending of two different arts. And um, where his artistry and my writing, we kind of have to work together and kind of have this unspoken communication. It's kind of, kind of a nice little love story, really. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's great because we then have, you know, we were able to make some great books that um, we have three titles 
and three titles and about six books right now. Oh We're working on our seventh, uh, which is going to be released in about a month. And then um, we will have an eighth a couple months after that. That is absolutely incredible. Now, are some of these ones behind mm -hmm. us? Couldn't grab one, I guess, and yeah, explain right to me what it is about. You know, now I'm going to finally be honest with you. First of all, we need to be honest about this situation that Bill is really tall and I'm standing on a stool, <laughs> so it does look a little bit awkward yeah. right now. Second of all, I am new to the world of comics, so if you can explain, I guess, what your comic is about and then how you know how people and why people are interested in this so much because I'm finding more and more I'm um, going over the interviews and we're talking to Rob Piaccio in just a little bit that this is something that people really love in this area well I think you know it's something that I, I don't think it's localized to just this area I think this area um, has a kind of an untapped wealth where there are a lot of artists who have worked in the industry and everything but through digital media and through social networking and even just printing cost kind of dropping, it's now becoming a reality for a lot of independent artists that they can write and get with an artist and put something together and then market it and sell it online, sell it through like Comixology, which is an online, a lot of digital print. So it's becoming more and more affordable for people to do this type of art. So do you think several years ago when it wasn't as affordable, this is something that you would still take up as a hobby? Um, a few years ago, I would say it would be kind of more of a pipe dream. I think it was one of those things where um, a few years ago I would be reading comics and say, oh yeah, and I would even write some scripts and everything. But to find an artist who can, you know, put on paper and visualize what I'm trying to get out of my head is, um, is very fortunate. Uh, I think Chris and I are very fortunate to have worked uh, together and we do have very similar uh, senses of humor, very similar um, you know approaches to how we work. So I think that really um, has helped us quite a bit and we're both motivated so I think that really is you know, All right, key. So what is this comic that you have right now? Well we have three comics if you don't mind. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. um, so we're uh, basically our three titles and you know we have there you go. Hold these two for you. Um, we have Gears, uh, Ashes, and Earthbound. Gears was our first, and uh, Gears is a, about a robot in a world where uh, artificial intelligence ha is the dominant species on Earth, mm -hmm. and uh, this robot actually finds out that he starts dreaming and he has a soul, and he's the connection between humans and artificial intelligence. So um, it's a whacked out, very. Uh, what we love about this is that we get to kind of revisit our childhoods and you know little middle school humor and everything yeah. of that nature and ashes is kind of a twisted look at the afterlife and uh it's kind of if the afterlife was a um a just regular nine to five job like anything else <laughs> and uh grim reaper gets laid off and now he has an eternity to try to figure out what he has to do with his life and uh the third issue this is actually probably our most popular uh, title at this point is ashes and uh our third title will be coming out next month. Um, and Earthbound is our newest, and that's kind of uh, a pet project of mine, something that I really enjoyed, and it's uh, about a gentleman who uh, who dies, and he finds out that his soul is actually connected to every living being on Earth, and he uh, jumps in and out of bodies when times of need to uh, help them and help them discover something about themselves. Oh my gosh, that sounds yeah. really interesting so, too. There's lots of different stories. so. How do you come up with these ideas? Because honestly, it takes quite an imagination to put this onto paper and then, like you said, find an artist too that can match it. Um, well, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, you know, Chris and I both, are, our sons are about the same age and uh, a lot of our discussions are uh, held around a playground or something around <laughs> kids and stuff. So uh, I think we maybe catch some inspiration from the young children and just say, hey, you know, why does something have to be Put in four walls and i think again that's the comic medium is that you can do things in comics that defy you know physics defies everybody's imagination and you can get away with it because it's in print and it's you know it's art well, i know i can buy these right here today i'm gonna go home with these three after this shoot but 
how can, if somebody wants to find your material, how can they do that? Well, we have a website. You can go to www.zerocomics.com, and that's zero and just replace the O's with zeros. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes it's not always hard to, hard to find the domain. The other thing is here at Heroes, your mom, uh, you know, Heroes Your Mom throughout a uh, comic shop. You can come in, talk to Jarrett. He'll definitely put you in touch with us. And honestly, it's a small town. Chris and I are always around somewhere. So if you see us, say, hey, you know, we would like to talk about your comics. And I guarantee you, we'll stop and talk. Wonderful. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Bill. And I can't wait to delve into these and have my first experience with comics. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are on to our last indie artist, and it just happens to be WENY's very own Rob Piachu. He does all of that editing you see during the newscast. Well, him and a few other guys back there, but he's mainly in charge of that during the 5.30 and 6 hours. He puts a lot of work in for us, and he also does a lot of comics on his own. So Rob, tell me, how did you get into the world of comics, and why is it something that you still do on a regular basis? Well, it all goes back to the uh, Batman TV show. I started watching it by accident one day, and I sort of just got hooked on that, and then that led to getting the Batman comic books, and then Star Wars came along, and then I got into Marvel Comics. And, you know, it was a really big thing for a while for me, so I just kind of drifted into it by almost by accident, sort of. You know, true story, I guess. But, see? Uh, yeah, see? And that's kind of what I'm learning from the comic people, the comic guys, is that they kind of stumble into it or something just sparks their interest and they keep going with it. And Rob does something very special for all of us here at WENY. When we leave or when if somebody, you know, goes to and gets a different career or things like that, he does a special comic just for them. And it is crazy the things that you come up with, Rob. They're so <laughs> not only detailed, but have this incredible amount of character towards them and emotion towards them and for some reason I don't know if it's because you watch us on a daily basis or if you work with us on a daily basis but you come up with the craziest things to depict each and every one of us and I'll let you guys see kind of the screen here about some of the ones hanging in the back there's probably two dozen or more hanging back there right now and right in front of us is actually one. You guys all know Andy Malnoski, our sports guy here. He just went up to Syracuse. Well, he just did one of Andy. Tell us about this portrait that you did of Andy. Well, Andy's a good friend of mine, so that makes it, you know, you kind of know people pretty well. You, it gives you more things to kind of work with as far as an idea for that. Um, Andy's into wrestling, which is a very visual, you know, thing into itself. So I figured, okay, we got to have a wrestling theme to this. <laughs> that was kind of a no-brainer, but, you know, that's, but it was good because it made for a really good idea. And it made the idea process much easier to get to as far as what are we going to do, you know, because a lot of people, you, you know them, but you don't, they don't really have anything that's kind of like really funny or things that they do that really kind of stand out. It's like, okay, that's a great idea for this. But of course, Andy had the wrestling thing, so I said, okay, perfect, we're going to do that. And so I did sort of like a more of a movie poster. It's not really a comic, but it's more of a movie poster idea and including him, of course, in the picture. And of course, we put a couple of fairly well-known wrestlers, you know, Hulk Hogan and uh, Rick Flair and Beth Phoenix and you know even a couple of the staff here including myself made a little background yeah, cameo appearance know. just for the fun of it. It's absolutely incredible. Now how long does it take for you to actually do this from start to finish because from my understanding it's quite the process as you explained the other day. It takes many hours to do and it depends on how quickly you get the idea for because sometimes I'll have an idea for somebody and I'll kind of put it onto paper and it's like you know it doesn't quite work you know the way I wanted it to or you know sometimes you, you'll see it in your head but when it goes on paper, it's like, mm, that doesn't quite work the way I kind of was wanting it to work. So sometimes you have to revisit the idea. You may move elements of the drawing around. You know, each piece can be done as a separate illustration. And I guess now, Rob, this is something I've you know, had you ask the, the comics uh, last week, mm -hmm. and now I'm asking you, if somebody wants to step into this industry, it is an incredible amount of work. Um, what would you tell them, I guess, to either A, motivate them, or B, keep, keep them um, sticking with it? Well, the thing I was talking to somebody actually yesterday about was that, you know, have your own style. Don't try to be a clone of somebody else. I know there was a big thing years ago where, you know, so-and-so was the hot artist, and somebody said, well, I'm gonna draw just like so-and-so, you know, and they would like almost like clone their st style artistically to a T, and it's like, you don't wanna do that. Always have your own identity as, what, as far as what you do. Um, persistence, you know, there's a million people, I go to the conventions and there's just a million people that do this stuff. And it's great, I mean, and there's all different styles, there's all different types of things people do. People are into, you know, sword and sorcery, or they're into, you know, comic book stuff, or they're into science fiction. There's, there's a million different avenues for this that you can get into. 
Okay, so kind of find the one that you like and that you're kind of comfortable yeah. with. But also, you know, as an artist, I tell you, know, you learn to draw from real life. Don't just draw from comics or you know what you see in, in anywhere like that. You, you want to go outside and draw landscapes and, and do be well versed as much as you can because it's going to make you a better illustrator all the way around. Definitely, I agree with you, Rob. Thank you so much sure. for coming on. This whole episode was honestly because Rob said, you know what, there's a lot of awesome things with comics happening right here in the Southern Tier. And right after the break, we're headed back to the comic shop and you're going to find out how you can get involved and what they have to offer for you down there as well. Thanks so much, Rob. Thank you. Cool. Welcome back. So you have seen a lot of this comic shop in Elmira Heights and Jared, this is your shop and you should be a very proud man because there is so much. And I was just sitting here telling them that my senses are on like overload because of the amount of comics that they have here, but just the array of things too. It's absolutely like stunning actually to see how much content you guys have in this in this, this little shop and tell me about this shop and how it got started sure absolutely uh so uh heroes your mom throughout comic shop which was shortened to heroes just so it's less just to say uh heroes started uh over 12 years ago and uh it started on the silly idea that i could make money selling comics and so i stuck with it after five years of not making money selling comics. We just loved it, we enjoyed it. I love the format, I love the industry. Um, and so with any small business, you know, it's really lean. Those, really, those first three, four years, it's hard to make money. A lot of businesses fail. Um, but you know, I wasn't, I wasn't making pizzas. I wasn't doing something that was, that was goofy or there was no love attached to it. I was selling comic books and it's, it's great. And uh, you know, people enjoy it. Um, there's also a regularity to it. You know, they come out every week. So every Wednesday, you know, I'm seeing friends, I'm seeing people where we're reading, we're talking about what we enjoy. So it, it made it easy to kind of stick with it. And then finally, you know, we built a foundation of, of great customers and, you know, we're, you know, about to go on to year 13 and, you know, I can pay my bills. So there it's nice. So. And tell me, or tell our viewers a little bit about how much you offer here and, and honestly the array of different things that you guys have to offer too because sure. it's not just big names here as well i mean it, it's an incredible amount of, of books like so that I, I can't believe it. absolutely yeah and that's just i mean so there's even almost two major food groups you've got you know your weekly comic books your floppies you know what we what we think of as comic books and then you've got your graphic novels you know your trade paperbacks your your collected editions and so again every wednesday you know we get literally thousands I anywhere mean, from a thousand to two thousand books every week and it's you know it's split between the two major publishers you know marvel comics and then dc comics you know so we got spider-man we've got superman and batman and then we've got all the the independent comics um again just like zero comics there's a lot of uh you know creative people out there that are doing lesser known creations but you know they love it and so we'll we'll carry we'll carry anything as long as it's interesting and people care uh you know we'll carry it that's so, awesome it's fun. and now you obviously have a deep deep passion for this when you were growing up i guess what was that one comic that was like that's it. <laughs> right? They got me. That's it. That's the sure. juice comic yeah. that kept you going. Absolutely. Um, so it's funny. So there's there's two different times in my life when that happened. So when I was a kid, um, uh, again, uh, Todd McFarlane was on Spider-Man. And then, so the ones I loved was uh, anything McFarlane was doing. And then there was Ren and Stimpy. And those, just, those were just ridiculous. So I would, <laughs> I would just uh, grab comics whenever I could find them. Uh, went through high school, kind of went away from it and what have you. Um, when I became older, had my firstborn son, um, we moved into a place and, you know, my wife has a better sense of style than I do. So I was only really allowed like one room to decorate and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this with the bathroom. So then I got back <laughs> into comics just for pop art oh and God. just bought them like, okay, I'm going to decorate this and what have you. And then I started reading them again. And, uh, it went from the idea of just, okay, pop art's fun and Andy Warhol's fun to like, oh my gosh, I forgot how much I enjoyed them and so uh connection was made in the back you got it Ooh, yeah knew. maybe that's why you like the romance ones i don't know oh, they're <laughs> I'm great just kidding. all right thank you so much jared and please come down here location on the spot what sure absolutely so we are at 130 
West 14th Street in Elmira Heights, New York. Definitely yeah. come down Wednesday through Sunday, correct? Uh, Wednesday through Saturday, yep. Nope, Wednesday Absolutely. through Saturday. You there it. you go. Come on down. <laughs> Every Wednesday is fresh, hot new stuff. They've got, got all it. the boxes here getting ready for the big day tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode of Twin Tier Sunday. I'll see you next week. Make sure you tune in to Twin Tier Sunday. This week we explore the world of comics, from the big name artist to the local indie author and illustrator. If you're a comic fan, you're going to...